Good morning, welcome to Meets Trial Shop. I'm Jason. Today we're gonna to be working on my 1970 Mach 1 Mustang called Mabel. It's got a 351 Cleveland FMX in it. Today the issue we're gonna be dealing with is a little bit of cooling issues here. Uh, I'll give you a little background on this. Uh, you've seen the, this engine, I built it uh, way earlier in, uh, in the series, but uh, there's a 30 thousandths over, 351 Cleveland should be about 10 and a half to one compression. Um, I'm running a cold case, uh, 24 inch radiator. I have, I think it's CJ Pony Parts shroud with two 12 inch cooling fans on there. And the car runs cool going down the road. But when you get stuck in traffic, the temp will slowly creep up. And after about 20 minutes of sitting there, she'll be about 220. So normally it's fine, but uh, I live in Atlanta. It's been about 100 degrees lately. And I'd like to drive the car back and forth to work, but uh, I don't want to get stuck on the freeway and end up having to sit down, uh, broke down on the side, overheated. So uh, what we're going to do is we are going to do the... Uh, Mercury Ford contour uh, fan conversion on this. I think it's a cooling issue. Like I said, it's not pulling enough air sitting at idle um, through the radiator. And uh, for you Cleveland guys, yes, I have the correct thermostat in there. Yes, I have the correct thermostat uh, uh, bypass plate on there. Uh, I've tried the, the clutch fan. I've tried the you know, shroud, obviously. Um, I don't run it without a shroud, but I've tried uh, better cooling fans and it, it's gotten progressively better than what it has before, man. If I Five minutes she'd just she'd be 220 just sitting here in the driveway um so she's actually way better you can actually drive the car now but uh, we're going to try the contour fan swap on this and uh, we'll see if that'll help us out a little bit so let's go ahead and let's get started first thing you want to do is you want to drain your radiator don't do like i did and drive it two hours back and forth to summit racing uh, and then pull it in here and immediately start working on it because uh, you will get burned um, so make sure your radiator is nice and cool before you uh, uh start draining the coolant out of it i've already disconnected the lower radiator hose i can disconnect the upper radiator hose and then uh, on your uh, uh hood uh, latch here it's the two middle bolts that will pull the upper radiator uh, support or hold down bracket off. Those are half inch um, bolts. So go ahead and disconnect that, disconnect that upper hose, disconnect your cooling fans if you have it in there, um, and then go ahead and yank the radiator out. Let's do it. Okay, I've got the radiator out. Before we move on to uh, removing the old fan and shroud setup, I want to add one thing to this. This contour fan setup, it pulls roughly 4,000 to 5,000 CFM on both fans, but it pulls a lot of amperage. It pulls like 20 amps of fan when it first kicks on, 20 overall, but 40 on startup. You're going to have to upgrade your rate, or excuse me, you're going to have to upgrade your alternator on this setup here. Um, you will not get by with the old stock alternator. Now on this car, I've already upgraded to the Ford 3G 130 amp alternator. I put a 1995 Mustang GT alternator in here, and I'm also using the PA Performance voltage regulator that just bolts in, uh, to the side of the firewall in place of your old factory regulator that we don't have to change any gauge wire or anything like that. Um, it's a real simple install. Uh, I'll try to cover it uh, real quick here. Um, obviously mine's already on the car, so I'm not going to show you how exactly to install it, but it's, it's real simple, literally bolts right in place of the old one. You don't have to modify anything other than a little bit of your wiring. All right. So as you can see here, I've got the 1995 Mustang GT 3G alternator. Um, it's using the factory, uh, adjustment here, factory bolt hole here that goes in there. Um, but what I did do down here, which this is imperative that you guys do this, this is a mega fuse. I've got 175 amp mega fuse wired in. So this wire goes up to what used to go up to the battery terminal on the alternator uh, that comes down is what feeds the main power to the car. So this comes down to one side of the 175 amp uh, fuse. And then I've got an eight gauge uh, cable that comes up here and goes to the back of the alternator here. It's kind of hard to see, but it hooks up here um, to the uh, battery uh, location on the back of the alternator. And what I'll do is I'll give you a part number on that alternator, Rock Auto, it's like 110 bucks. Um, and then I'll also give you the wiring diagram for it. Um, just so you know, and I know it looks like a wiring bomb went off in here, but I'm slowly going through the wiring. This is that PA Performance Voltage Regulator. It really doesn't do anything because these 3G alternators, they're internally regulated. Um, but what that does is that just factory wiring plugs in and you can still keep your uh, keep your power gauge, your amp gauge. So, but that's that. 
All right, just to go in a little bit more of the wiring at, the reason I run that mega fuse uh, is this car is 1970. It's got the factory original wiring in there and it was never made to have 130 amp alternator. So you don't want to play, let's burn our car to the ground because we didn't wire it properly and hope the fire uh, department gets here quick enough to put it out because it ain't going to happen. Um, so that's why I run that mega fuse on there. I highly suggest if you're doing an, an alternator upgrade, even if you're not doing one, that you put a mega fuse in uh, on the power line for your alternator. That way, uh, like I said, if it, if it shorts out, it's going to blow that, uh, that fuse and you don't have to worry about burning your car to the ground. If you're worried about blowing the fuse out, carry a couple of them in the glove box. They're cheap. They're, they're, they're worth it. Um, it's worth the extra insurance. So, uh, like I said, I highly, highly suggest, number one, carrying a fire extinguisher in your car. Number two, having that mega fuse in line on your alternator. That way, uh, that fuse is going to blow if anything goes wrong. But, uh, all right, let's get to the, the sh shroud part. So... All right, we've got the radiator out. I've got it on my welding table. I gotta rip my uh, uh, old electric fans and shroud off there. Um, just so you know, these are the Permacool. These are supposedly 2300 CF, CFM fans each. Um, I don't know. I don't know if they are or aren't, but I can tell you we're gonna try a different setup anyway. I don't really like this shroud as it is. So let's go ahead, we'll get the shroud off, and then we'll place the new shroud over there. I'll tell you how to cut it and I have to make some L brackets and get it to bolt up. So let's get this done. All right, I got the shroud off. As you can see here, I do have some foam tape. I had foam tape in here to kind of take up the, uh, the gap around the shroud. That way I knew all the air coming uh, through the fans was gonna have to come through the front of this radiator, try and cool it down. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab the replacement fan. I'll tell you the part number and we'll take a look at getting it on there. All right, so this is the Ford Contour replacement fan by Dorman. It's 620-104 for the part number. Yep, just verified it is correct. So it's also fragile, which means a bowling alley or something like that. But uh, this is it. You can get them uh, about 140 bucks. I think uh, I got this one from Summit Racing. It was like 141, 142, right around there. So 140, 145 bucks. You can get them from Advance Auto, um, at AutoZone, any of your big box stores. You go to that uh, Rainforest place. I know they got them on there, but I needed mine today. So that's why I went to Summit Racing. If you haven't figured out, I'm I'm in the Atlanta area, so it's easy to run there. All right, so it seems to be pretty well vacuum packed. There it is. Boy, that's cheap looking. Let's hope it holds up. It says it's made in Thailand. Uh, careful in Thailand. Uh, you military guys know what I'm talking about. It may get a surprise. Anyway, so let's go ahead. Let's uh, lay this down over the, uh, the radiator and we'll see how well it fits. I know we have to do some trimming. All right, so right off the bat, I can see I gotta do some trimming. We're gonna trim uh, this top piece off. We're gonna trim off the side holders there and then she should fit surprisingly well after that so let's go ahead and do some trimming i gotta say this fits actually extremely well i am Thoroughly surprised at how well it fits on there. Um, hmm. Wow. All right, now that I've got this kind of test fit on here, um, we are gonna have to make some L brackets um, to hold this to the radiator. Um, but first, I wanna go ahead, I wanna place this back in the car to test fit it, make sure it clears my pulley system. All right, I slid in the car as is, and she just clears everything. And I've got AC and all that, so it does clear. It's a little tight, but uh, once you bolt it down, it should be fine. Let's go ahead. We'll take some measurements here. We're going to make some L brackets for each side, bolt it together. All right, so real quick, my bracket's going to be 12 inches long by, looks like about, we'll do 5 eighths on the edge that goes against the radiator. And you know what? Uh, I think we'll do 1 inch. Ah, we'll do three quarters of an inch uh, that comes up here along this edge here. So 12 inches by five eighths against the radiator and we'll do uh, three quarters of an inch, inch uh, against the um, fan uh, set up here. That's on the passenger side. Looks like we'll go ahead and do both brackets 12 inches long. It'll probably be the same measurements. Yeah, we'll do five eighths again. 
and we'll go ahead yeah we'll just go ahead and make it uh, three quarters of an inch as well so both are gonna be 12 inches long five eighths uh, wide that's against the radiator uh, three quarters of an inch tall uh, against the fan um, support but let's go ahead I think I've got some aluminum angle I'll go ahead and cut that up we'll screw this together paint it all up real nice and then that should do it so um, I'm gonna pause for now while we go ahead and cut that angle up all right, I got the brackets manufactured. Um, I did not use angle. What I ended up doing is I took some 16 gauge steel, um, cut it down to size, put it in my brake, and then just bent it up. Um, it's not a custom job. I mean, I definitely, this is not a show car, but it'll work. So you can see, all I did is I punched some holes through the side of the fan shroud. What I did try to do is where those brackets were that we cut off, the plastic's a little bit beefier. So that's where I put my uh, uh, fasteners at on each side. That way the fan shroud will hold it a little bit better but uh, drill them up now what you have to do is you have to figure out where you want to mount your um, fuses and or circuit breakers what I do for mine is I run those 40 amp uh, little 40 amp circuit breakers let me see if I got one here somewhere all right instead of fuses what I run is I run these they're little 50 amp circuit breakers um, they look like this um, you can get them uh, pretty much any auto parts store so what I'll do is I mount these to the shroud uh, my old shroud had them. I use one on each fan. That way you don't have them going through the same circuit breaker. But um, you just want to mount them in a place out of the way on the shroud. If you're drilling through your shroud, don't leave it on your radiator and drill through the radiator at the same time. I know. Sounds stupid. I've seen people do it. Um, but, uh, yeah, so just go ahead. Same thing. Just want to bore a couple holes somewhere on your shroud where you can install two circuit breakers. And then you run your power wire um, to the circuit breaker. That way it will reset if it pops doesn't leave you stranded on the road if it was a just just a quick over power or something like that so let's go ahead and do that all right as you can see here I've got the uh, shroud all wired up um, I did use I know I said 50 amp circuit breakers earlier but these are actually 40 amp circuit breakers um, that's what I'm running on mine I guess you could use 50 amp circuit breakers this one is actually a uh, my spare one here is a 50 amp circuit breaker but the ones I've got on my shroud are 40s um, I'll give you a part number in the description um, and then for the plugs I'll give you a part number also in the description but I'll read it to you now the factory style plug that hooks up to these fans this is a standard and it's s 8 Seven. These were $9 a piece at Summit Racing. Um, so I did, obviously, I bought two, um, one for each fan. These are one speed fans. These do not have three pins, so it does not have a low and a high. It's just on or off. That's it. So I've got these wired. I do suggest you use 10 gauge wire um, on this just because of all the amperage these things draw. You know, um, I guess if, if you think about uh, the smaller the wire, the harder it is to push the amps through there, the bigger the wire, the easier it is to push the amps. Think of choking down a, a garden hose uh, only as in, uh, instead of water, it's amperage coming through there. So the thicker the wire, the better. Don't use household wiring. Don't use solid core wiring. You want a good quality stranded copper wire, which is what I use I'm not gonna lie I did use red for both negative and positive on this why because I'm out of black um, so uh, I did put uh, um, excuse me some convoluted tubing over there just to stop chafing and everything else make sure to zip tie it down real good um, but this shrouds now wired I've got my pigtails on here the fans I did test them that may be one thing you want to do at the very beginning is test this thing before you start cutting apart and drilling on it that way if it's not uh, good you can take it back and uh, swap it for a new one um, but anyway we're ready to mount this to the radiator let's go ahead and do that I'm lucky as I'm just going to go ahead and reuse the mounting tabs that I had on my old shroud you may have to um, add some but uh I'll uh, try and take a picture of these for you, but I just used a little a nut clip or a nut plate um, that slides back and forth on the side of the radiator where the mounting tabs are already at. That's how I mounted mine. So I'll take a picture when it's done for you. All right, we got the fan shroud mounted. It's tightened down. We've got foam stripping underneath it all the way around. We've got our circuit breakers mounted. It's uh, wired up. Let's go ahead and slip it back in the car. Yeah, slip it in. All right, we've slid the radiator back in. It's time to go ahead and just basically hook up the hoses, make our two electrical connections, put in the top uh, bracket there, and then go ahead, fill the radiator, start the car, and we'll let it run. I'm not going to walk you back through that procedure, but I'll just snap forward to when it's done and running. All right, she's in. She's ops checked. Uh, burped it. Got all the air out of the system. Drove around my neighborhood a few times. Um, 
she's actually cooling now. Or well, before you'd sit there and a temp would just slowly climb, you know, maybe a degree every 30 seconds, you know, just steadily climb. Now, granted, I was just sitting in the driveway, but she's actually cooling pretty quick. Um, drops down now instead of either A staying steady or B going up. So I'd say she's she's cool. And the ultimate test will be driving it through hot Atlanta traffic in the uh, stop and go uh, freeway. But uh, for now, I'll say she's good to go. I do want to add one thing. When I first got it up and running, got the fans turned on, something wasn't quite right. Now I know the left fan, pin one was positive, pin two was negative. I checked it on the bench. Therefore, I didn't bother checking the fan on the right because they're both the same, both take the same pins, right? So one should be positive, two negative. As I said, in Taiwan, you get surprised. Believe it or not, the right fan, pin one was negative, pin two was positive. Therefore, I had one fan pulling, the other fan pushing. Um, so I had to jack the car up, get underneath there instead of pulling the radiator out and rewired everything really quick. And now they're both pulling. So uh, check your fans before you complete your wiring. I do want to add that. Um, but yeah, she's all buttoned up. Um, she's good to go. I'm going to put some uh, pictures probably maybe over here. Well, maybe just I'll put them on the screen and just phase them as they go so you can see the clearance between the pulleys um, and uh, whatnot in the fan. It's, it's a little tight, like I said, but she's got more than enough clearance. And now, I, I mean, I can feel it pushing air all the way back behind the engine, you know, where before you couldn't feel air moving around back there. So I'm, I'm confident that this should fix my problem. So uh, again, this should work for all 24 inch Mustang radiators from the uh, 65, 64 and a half on up to, uh, I guess whatever years don't have 24 inch uh, radiators, but mine's 24 inches by 16 inches. And this is the Ford Contour fan. I believe it's like the 2000 model around there. Anyways, I gave you the part number and I'll, I'll run some part numbers here at the end or actually better yet, I'll put them in the description down there. So that's it, she's up, she's running. Um, talked a little bit about the 3G alternator swap. As I said, you gotta have that if you're gonna run these fans because they pull so much uh, amperage, your stock alternator just won't be able to keep up. Make sure to put a uh, fire extinguisher in your car and uh, run one of those mega fuses, definitely. But that's it. That's all I've got for you today. Happy Father's Day to those fathers out there. I um, appreciate you checking out the channel. Uh, I'll see you again next time. Remember, keep your heads up and your stick on the ice. One thing I want to add about the wiring, um, I did not show you how to wire the fans. I apologize for that, but uh, the reason why is my fans I've already already wired. Um, I will tell you the 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 relay that I'm using to run my fans is that MSD solid state relay. Um, I believe I co covered the wiring on that in the Holly Sniper installation. But what I'll do is I'll put a schematic um, for like a, a standard 40 amp relay. Um, if you are gonna wire it without that MSD solid state relay, you're gonna need to run a separate relay for each fan. Please don't, don't pull power through one relay on both of these fans. You'll smoke that relay, it'll just melt down on you. You'll have to have a fan controller, which means you'll need a temp sensor for off and on. It's one sensor that, that will trip off and on for the fans, or I guess the other way around, on, off, whatever you want to call it. But uh, that temp sensor will then trigger the relay and then uh, the relays will pull power to the fans so the fans run. But I'll put up a, just a quick schematic I'll find somewhere off the internet and kind of show you how to wire. One quick thing about wiring, um, make sure you use good quality wire. Use the biggest gauge that you can physically get on there. You better go oversized than to go undersized and smoke a wire. And if you've got those cheap crimpers, I, actually I don't even have a copy to show you in my shop because they get thrown away if, if they ever come in, but usually they come in a kit from one of the big box stores, Home Depot or Lowe's, that's got like a smash crimper on the end and, and the stripper in the middle and they're usually red or blue handled. 
about five or ten dollars they're junk throw them away if you're wiring with those don't don't wire take it somewhere else and let them wire it because those things are garbage um, strip your wires and solder and then heat shrink them if you have to or if you know you're going to be doing a lot of wiring go out and get a set of Raychem crimpers these are dmc's they're uh, gmt 232 part number these are for doing environmental splices i got these when i was in the military they're fantastic um, you'll never have a splice go wrong when you do these with the proper splices i will tell you though the splices are a bit expensive or you get a, a pair of amphenol they make these in yellow white handle for the uh, smaller gauges or red or blue this is uh, for using uh, butt splices or, or like the lugs this is what I crimp everything again ex-military stuff here so uh, uh, you know I purchased this properly through the uh, correct channels on base um, but uh, these are part number um, 59250 again it's amp amphenol or amp incorporated you can get them off eBay or anywhere else um, airlines you know airlines we use these all the time too but uh, you can crimp with these and do your splices butt splices they'll they'll last forever you won't have a problem with these those little cheap crimpers like I said throw them away they're gonna cause a fire don't use them so that's my tip for, uh, for wiring anyway thank you